you know, you could do this training and use simulation like they do in the medical and military and aviation industries, right? We knew simulation existed. We've seen it out there for, why don't they do it in any of these trades? And, and we looked around and no one was doing it. And, and you, could, you could see how effective it was. It had been proven 10 times over for decades in these, you know, highly capitalized industries. Middle, you know, when lives are at stake, the government's not afraid to put $10 million into come some kind of simulation training to save lives or in medical situation. It was way too expensive to get to HVAC or electrical or you know, who is going to finance that. But the development costs had come way down. And the delivery you know, with broadband and, and the devices we had now, it just it made a lot of sense to us. So our specialty was point of view. Um, simulation. Basically, they look like video games, but instead of killing the bad guy, you're learning a technical skill set. And we've been delivering on 2D devices. They work on tablets or desktops or whatnot. And we knew virtual reality would be, you know, a platform that would be genius for this, but we never knew when it was really going to be ready. And frankly, you know, if I, I guess about this time last year was the first time we all really put on the new head mounted devices and saw the platform. And we were, the, you know, across the board, just blown away that it had finally, you know, after a long, long promise. I mean, a long. I mean, virtual reality has popped up every five years. As now, it's going to make it. And and after a long promise, I think it was legitimately. You can make a legitimate claim that tech, technologically, it's there. And um, a couple of things. One, we, I looked at it, and the experience was not a degree better. It was 10 degrees better. Uh, we did some prototypes and ran it by some manufacturers, people in the industry. And you know, I had six years of experience of talking to manufacturers on the 2D devices. And then we presented them with this. And the difference was dramatic. I, I would have, I would show our stuff to, let's say, Carrier Corporation, who's a, a customer of ours. And they would say, this is the best online training we've ever seen. Um, the difference, when they put on the head-mounted device, and we did a, uh, a, a show last year at this time and had a little vignette, you're not halfway through the, uh, the experience. And they're taking the head-mounted device off. And they say, all right, what do I need to get this going? And that reaction, that market reaction, made me really comfortable that you know, the market was they saw what I hope they did, that it is dramatically better. Um, our stuff is still going to publish to 2D devices. So while that's going to take a lot of investment in technical time, which is what we've been doing most of 2017, that was the decision we made to sort of mitigate that risk. And it's a unique position, right? Because we can go out there and play on this really cutting edge technology, but yet still deliver on the devices we've been delivering on for six or seven years. But, now, but I'll tell you what, I, you, know, you say, what does this look like in the future? I mean, if there's a, a killer application for virtual reality, and especially in the non-gaming sense, like, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm obviously biased, but technical training is, is really, I mean, right up there because of its, you know, you can't scale hands-on training before this. I mean, and this is a bottleneck and part of the reason they have manpower deficits in these industries. And this is a technical solution that really could make a difference. And, um,